And uh, this is module three. And so I'm going to be covering a variety of different things. I just want to make sure that you understand that a budget is a roadmap. There is no 100% correct type of way to budget because it depends upon the organization. It depends upon what they're trying to accomplish. So when you're starting to take a look at budgeting as a process, it is a process. It's more of, a, of an art than a science because no one gets it right 100% of the time every single time. So we're going to be covering a wide variety of different issues when we start taking a look at budgeting. Um, we have to understand that, design, that budgeting is designed to help make decisions that much better. You know, if we're anticipating uh, 10,000 uh, tickets being sold for a game, well, then you could budget how much uh, resources you might need, such as personnel. It can help you also understand and appreciate uh, how much uh, parking spaces you might need, how many hot dogs you need to buy, how many sodas you need to buy, and things like that to make sure that you have enough stock so you can handle it. But most organizations don't just look at one game. They look at an entire season. They might look at multiple years and then try to process what they're going to be doing in the future based upon what the budget might entail. So what I'm going to be starting to take a look at are the different types of budgets that are out there. Now the primary types of budgets that are out there are going to be a cash budget and then an operating budget. A uh, cash budget represents an estimate of the team's cash position. How much money do we have at a given time? Uh, if you need to pay your bills as an example, then it's important to know how much money you have. Think of it like what you have in your wallet. And if that's all the money that you have available, that is your cash budget. So you could spend accordingly, and if you have $10 in your wallet, then you can spend $10 and that's it. An operating budget, on the other hand, takes a look at the organization in a broader perspective. And it looks at forecasted revenue and expenses, typically for a season or maybe a year, or it might be for a couple of years, and then takes a look at how we're doing. So if we're taking a look at personnel, for example, and we have 100 employees, well, then we have to look at what is the cost of those employees and all their benefits for the next year. If we need to reduce staffing because we need to cut our budget, what will be the impact? If we have to, uh, uh, you know, increase and grow, well, that's great, but we have to understand what will be the impact. For example, if you're going to be growing the company, do you have space for them, office space for them? Do you have phones and things like that? If you're anticipating growing, then you need to budget for that potential growth. So that is one of the different things that we're going to be taking a look at. Now, different elements within the budget that we look at include, for example, estimates for the future. Like what is our anticipated sales? What are anticipated expenses? Sometimes you just increase last year's budget by 10% as a way to uh, reflect that you think there might be a 10% increase in sales. That isn't always the case, but that is an approach that can be taken. You also look at fixed costs and variable costs. Variable costs vary based upon the number of units produced. So if you're going to be producing, um, let's say, 10,000 sneakers, well, you might have a fixed cost, which is going to be the overhead costs associated with running the factory. It might be employee cost. It might be costs associated with machinery or with the loans that you have for the debt service as it relates to the, the facility that you manufacture them in. But then the variable cost might be how much uh, leather and how much other fabric is used per shoe, how much rubber is used per shoe. What is the cost? per shoelace that is used for each shoe. Those are variable costs that are dependent upon the number of units. So if uh, each shoe costs $3 in variable costs with all the different fabrics and material involved in each shoe, and then you might have fixed costs of, let's say, $2 per shoe, then your combined fixed and variable costs will be $5 for that shoe. Now, if you're trying to break even, then you'll sell the shoe for $5. If you're trying to make a profit, you're going to sell it for more. Now, part of the uh, costs that we have to take a look at are administrative costs, which go into it, which aren't directly associated with the number of units produced or fixed costs attributable to the number of units produced, but they are costs associated with running the business. So they could be like your marketing department, your advertising department, and uh, finance and stuff, like this, which might not necessarily impact the direct cost per unit. So if it was $5 and those other administrative costs are a dollar per shoe, now you're at $6. So you have to market it accordingly 
And then if you're trying to make a 50% return on your investment, then you have to sell each shoe for $12 each. So that is part of the analysis that we'll take a look at um, when we look at um, budgets. Now, a lot of what we have to take a look at are all the different uh, costs. And we've covered costs before uh, previously, uh, and this is just one more time where we have to start taking a look at them. Um, because that will help dictate what's going on. We also have a number of different types of budgets. Well, we have the cash and operating budget. An operating budget can be broken down into smaller units. Examples of that include uh, a sales budget, which looks at the sales and what are the sales expected to be. Then you might have a labor budget, looking at the cost of personnel. You could have a production budget. What does it cost to produce the product? Uh, you might have an expense budget, breaking down all the different expenses for the entire organization. Those are all sample budgets that are out there. Now, one of the other budgets that is out there is a capital budget. And that is normally looking at if we're trying to build something in the future, like a new stadium or a new practice facility or a new office building. Those are uh, costs uh, and income that can be analyzed. Now, if you're building a new practice facility, there might not be any income generated from it unless you rent it out. So it's just going to be a strictly expense-related item, but you're going to have to take a look at what are the long-term expenses, as well, such as uh, debt service on the facility, as well as the short-term operating expenses that will occur every day or every month or every year, such as toilet paper for the bathrooms, uh, uh, water bottles and uh, drinks and stuff like that, watering for the outside, watering for the grass, those kind of expenses will be included. Um, if uh, you do not have a budget, then you could run into significant trouble, and the primary trouble is that you might run out of cash, or you might anticipate you're going to have a certain amount of sales and they don't materialize, and you have all these expenses that still have to be paid. So it's important to go through this process, and there could be a lot of mistakes. You can, for example, have too much reliance on uh, a form or on set numbers rather than being flexible to accommodate the situation. Um, you might undertake pet projects for an executive and that might impact the budget even though it doesn't make sense to follow it you pursue that because an executive wants you to pursue it um, you might uh, misuse internal rate of return trying to figure out if you should go with a given investment uh, for let's say starting a new line of products and you thought it was going to be more successful than it really is uh, you could also have making cash flow projection errors we anticipate selling 10,000 units and only sell 1,000. Well, that will destroy any budgeting process you might have. Those are just some of the uh, issues that might arise, and I encourage you to uh, go through the chapter and go through the material outlined in the uh, module, and you're definitely going to come up with uh, other ideas and issues. Um, when you develop and design a budget, you have to include all the different stakeholders. You have to examine past documents, you have to uh, examine economic trends, you have to look at a number of different things and one of the key areas is people in the field and what they say. If your sales force says they don't anticipate sales increasing in a significant manner, then you have to be wary of that and put that in the budget. Um, now when you're developing budgets, there are different types of approaches to it. One is the line item budget. Each item, each expense, each revenue has a separate line. And that way you can go through meticulously and try to identify where you might be able to save money, where you might be able to increase your revenue. You also might have program budgets. For example, it might be for a certain unit within a business. Let's say for the marketing or for public relations. And they might have their own unit. Uh, if you're a manufacturing, a sport manufacturing company, every line of shoes, as an example, might have their own potential budget. You might have a percentage incremental budget where you dictate what we want to give for each area and based on a percentage. Like we give 2% every year to marketing. Well, then you can anticipate that and appreciate that and apply it for the future. Uh, you could have a top down where you take a look at um, uh, what are the most important things or what are on the flow chart of the organization where they need to develop and design and implement uh, strategies and where that money is going to be going based upon where it fits within the ultimate goals and objectives of the organization. You might have a bottom up which goes from the very basic level on up. That's another approach to look at. You might have what's called ZBB, zero based budgeting, where you start everyone from zero and you have to justify your uh, money that you're going to be getting 
and why you have those expenses in the future as a way to protect yourself and make sure that no one's just trying to have a budget just for the sake of having a budget, but there's a rationale and reason behind it. Uh, another thing that you should be taking a look at when we look at um, the budgeting process is um, the whole issue of break-even analysis. Are we going to be breaking even with something? And that helps you identify where you can have greater profit centers or where expenses might be too high as an example. You also might want to take a look at what we call a cost-benefit analysis. If it's going to cost us uh, $10,000 to make profit of $500, is that a good cost-benefit analysis? If you can make more money by investing money in, let's say, the bank, and that's very safe, or T-bills, which is even safer, well, then it's probably not worthwhile investing in, uh, in that strategy. And so you always have to take a cost-benefit analysis to every uh, income component and every expense component within the budget. Another component that we have to take a look at is what's called variance analysis. Variance analysis is where you take a look at what actually occurred and then compare it with your budget. So it might be during the middle of a season, you might realize as an example that lo and behold, we don't have any money. We're run out of money. We had budgeted for a million dollars in expenses and we're already exceeding that. And then you have to figure out how are we going to do this? Are we going to borrow money? What are we going to do? Uh, or you might find out that you're not spending enough money and then you might have more flexibility to produce some interesting promotional items that you can write off as an expense. And so that becomes part of this analysis. So variance analysis, critical component to take a look at what you thought was going to happen and then what actually happened. Uh, that is the basics of budgeting and we're going to be moving uh, from there on and I hope uh, you found this uh, video useful. Thanks a lot.